we're talking about uh, yeah. <laughs> Sonic Central. You're not excited for Tokyo Games wow. 2020 with Sonic? <laughs> Hey, look, I'm a Sonic fan. Malik, give us the lowdown on uh, what happened here with Sonic Central. Okay, so uh, they're at Sonic's 30th anniversary, and Sega, um, as they do, wanted to preserve the legacy of Sonic. And mm. you can't you can't discredit them for trying, right? They're just trying to give fans stuff. But what we ended up with was a bunch of like little weird things that nobody really asked for and nobody yeah. really wanted. Hey, um, whoa, 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 whoa! There, there's uh, some stuff in there that I, I think I would want. Yeah, did you see like, those chains? Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm all in on the chains. Yo, all there's four of them, four of us. I, I say we call up Sega and, <laughs> and we represent on the tails. street. I Let's take go. tails. <laughs> oh, God. But it's, it's, I mean, for me, Sonic has always been an arcade game. It's yeah. never been something that I'm really like, oh, I want to play this at home, like whatever. Like I go to an arcade and I play it and it's, and I, I mean. Even Sonic Adventures? State, uh, Sonic Adventures was okay for me. Like in my in my opinion, the best Sonic game ever made was the Shadows one, okay, where it was like yeah, that yeah. open world shooter. Because like oh, they tried yeah. something new. They like it was right. it was oh basically like Shadow but GTA. Like it was GTA yeah. but with Shadow instead of. It was like a weird thing. Um, but like they they're trying right and i brought up this point before the show at least sega is doing more for sonic than nintendo did for the legend of zelda like there's at, still at time least, there's, some, there's still time whoa <laughs> i'm That's just intense. saying i'm just saying but it was like we got a bunch of like little weird dlcs they talked about some of like these animations that they're making and i and i want to get your guys's opinion because it seems like sonic isn't really about the game anymore it's it's more so just this brand where they just keep creating stuff for it and it just keeps growing and it's not at the level of something like mario but it seems like they're almost treating it in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's um, like fake it till you make it. Well, they don't have to fake it anymore because they, they have that legacy, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I posed this question before and I'll ask it before we end. Actually, I won't bring it up right now. I'll ask it before we end. Um, but I want to talk more about specifically the Sonic Central because like you mentioned, there was some announcements that were like, uh, okay, what's going on? So yeah. the cameos mm -hmm. of Sonic throughout different iter like different games. So Two Point right. Hospital is one of them. Um, yeah, so it was... Tokyo Games 2020, there's a Sonic DLC and an unreleased Yakuza game. Judgment. There's a so Minecraft uh, That's collab the one piece. I'm excited about. Judgment, because, yeah. you know, those Yakuza games, you could do pretty much anything you want. Like, you could pet cats, go to a cat cafe, sing karaoke. And why not go to an arcade, Malik, and play a Sonic fighting game? Right, I was gonna say, Caboose, that's that's prime for your YouTube channel. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not bad, but yeah, this this whole presentation was just full of like little like Sonic nuggets, and then and then they were like, okay, okay, we all know you want like a, a brand new one, so here's the tiniest, littlest, little sample size tease we could possibly give you. Um, yeah. I don't know, I'm not I'm not huge into Sonic, and I'm not huge into these games in this world. So like this just I don't have a dog in this in this fight, mm -hmm. but um, but I know that there was some controversy regarding this entire live stream and some people were either a little upset or excited. I, I, I'm just not sure where everyone here falls on that, especially when it comes to the announcement of what, what was it? Sonic Central. Yeah, that everyone was talking about. Yeah, Sonic, Sonic Central was the event, right? Um, yeah. And that the presentation and, and then they announced Colors Ultimate. Was... Yes. Colors okay. Ultimate, and then they have also the other game that they tease for Sonic. They tease that. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. I thought the game was called Sonic Central. I'm, I'm stupid. Clearly, yeah. um, but, <laughs> but but I will agree with what Malik is saying is that even though they're throwing out like 52 different Sonic titles that mm -hmm. that range from different types of games and genres, it is cool to see that Sega is just going all in and at least trying and doing yeah. something with this character and doing something with this brand as mm -hmm. much as they possibly can. I think that that is cool and I respect that. Mm -hmm. even yeah. If they, even if the games aren't for me, even if it's not something I'm necessarily looking forward to, 
Um, I like that for people who are fans, for people who are looking forward to the stuff, that there is plenty of content coming. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the nice things that, you know, I, I'm not too hot on Sonic. I, I've never been a real Sonic fan. But one of the things I can identify, at least in this in this um, presentation, was the fact that, you know, there are so many people here who uh, can appreciate the different ranges of Sonic games. Sega always makes sure that they have like the 2D Sonic games, the nostalgic yeah. legacy titles, the 3D games, especially we see at the, the very end that drove like uh, a lot of hype uh, for the 2022 game, which I must say, I think it's absolutely hilarious that they didn't give a title during the presentation and then immediately leaked the title in a press release and then took it back. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard about the yeah. Sonic Rangers, and then they're like, "Oh no, that that was totally yeah. old. Don't worry about it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's what? Like, okay. Maybe yeah, they're going to it was... renaming because that name. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Sure, I'll, I'll. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, regardless, I, ultimate I, really. No, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. No, I was going to say. Well, yeah, you kind of just touched on it. Sonic Colors. That that's a game that a lot of Sonic fans, you know, like and everything. So to see it come to, uh, you know, current gen consoles is, is really great. And I think that they're at least appreciating, you know, the, the those legacy titles yeah. and uh, keeping up with, you know, what people want from from this franchise. But in terms of like what this presentation did for me, like I said, I think I think the only th cool thing for me was uh, were those chains. I think we should all get them. But uh, yeah, I, I'll leave the excitement and anticipation for the for the hardcore sonic fans yeah, yeah, yeah. And i'm okay with that yeah they also pushed that uh i don't know if you guys noticed but they pushed that luna pretty pretty hard uh a couple of times in right. the, in the press conference which is amazon's uh yeah, yeah it's amazon's new streaming streaming thing, right? service, okay, yeah. yeah which is so um, weird because so yeah, their their and, sonic prime animation is coming to netflix they're just going with who the knows audience. <laughs> yeah. I like how at and, the end of that. But, who knows? Who knows? And Sonic Colors Ultimate, it the trailer for that reminded me almost identical to Mario Odyssey. Like, mm -hmm. I I am excited if we get a Mario Odyssey for Sonic, I am going to be over the moon. I will play it. That's I cool. will love it. Yeah. I yeah. I like that's something that could is do that, really is well. Is it going to happen? They have to, because at okay. this point, we're still doing a side scroller in a 3D world. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like Sonic Colors was fun, but you were basically just going one direction in but, a 3D world. So, so it felt like you're on rail. So this is what I asked, though, right? Because I know, Malik, you have some love for Sonic. I have some love for Sonic. Sonic, Sonic Mania was so much fun. I love the 2D elements, um, the platformer of Sonic. Now, how long do you have a legacy like Sonic and how long can you have that sell a product rather than actually create a product that stands the test mm. of the current time? Well, I think mm. you look at Mario as the perfect example of Mario. Like Mario is this like long lasting legacy, this character that like, I don't know, when you think of video games, you think of something like Mario. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, when they when they create new games, when they do something like Odyssey or or even back when they were making games like Mario Galaxy. Yeah. They were really trying new things and doing things differently, but still keeping the core gameplay mechanics that you would remember mm -hmm. from a Mario game. Well, and I think that's what people are maybe expecting or hoping at a Sonic. Well, yeah, and I think you're right. That's something mm -hmm. that probably people are, you know, hoping, but let's be mm -hmm. real, Sonic is not Mario. It's right? Not right. Because the the fact of it, and I think what really contributed to this, Sonic's a lot harder to follow when you're yeah. playing rather than a Mario game because you're taking the perspective of yeah. Mario. Sonic, yeah. you're just kind of like flying through and you're you could lose yourself um when you're watching him spin through a course, right? So sure. you know, when you have a character like Sonic and the legacy that Sonic has made that is not to the standard of Mario. Mm -hmm. Is is that good enough just to rely on his brand? Well, I no, mean, Sonic got a better Sonic got a better live action movie before Mario did. So. Very <laughs> That's true. He's got That's a, true. He's got a leg up in some aspects. I think yeah. that there's You're still right. there's there's a lot of money to be pumped into this character in this franchise that I think could still work. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll see what this new game is going to be about, what it's going to be like. But I think that there is there there are possibilities for them to be able to pump that kind of money into making a cool open world kind of like action and like adventure kind of game for Sonic. The same way we've gotten over these last couple of years, held decades for uh, for Mario. And then even still with that, 
while getting games like Mario Odyssey or Mario Galaxy, we'll get something like Mario Maker that still keeps that core 2D side-scrolling element that everybody loves from Mario. So right. you have those options, you have those things available to you, which I think we're getting stuff like that now based on what we saw during this presentation. But hopefully there's still that mix and not just they're sticking with one category, one version of uh, or one genre of game for the character. Yeah. Malik, Steve? Malik, go ahead. Uh, I just, I really don't think that it's going to be enough. I love Sonic. I think that they're they're starting to rely a little bit too heavily, like you were saying, Caboose, on like all the stuff just surrounding it, right? Yeah. But at the same time, when Nintendo puts Mario stuff out, I feel like they're just trying to milk me for my money. I know that they're, I know that really? they're going to get like it feels like they put stuff out and they know that Nintendo fans are going to buy it no matter what because <laughs> they, they got the, because yeah exactly. But these like. The messaging of all is for us as like gimmicky and weird as some of these announcements were, it was all pure fan service without expecting people to pay f- anything. Mm, yeah. Like right. it, it was just this like we want to give you fan like we want to reward fans for staying with the brand and, and yeah. giving you what you want. Eh, maybe not what you want, but if they want to def- continue as a game and grow and be successful, if it wants to stay relevant in the gaming world, they have to. Avoid Involved just like you know uh mario galaxy or, or mario odyssey like they they have to do something beyond the side scrolling because it's not enough anymore yeah mm-hmm. yeah i agree yeah i think i think Sega and sonic are in just like an interesting um position because you know everybody always likes comparing them to mario and everything and to a certain extent they kind of are but not really it's weird. Yeah. Um, but I do think that in terms of Sonic, the ceiling for success is much lower than Mario and will always be. Um, if this 2022 game comes out and it's, you know, critically adored, it's still not going to be as revered as a new Mario game is ever. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that That's just kind of the fact. And I don't know if they could ever push the envelope like a Mario game can just because of the the character, the character, the gameplay, the, there's only limited appeal to Sonic, I think, at this point, because after so many years, there's only a small pool of players who actually have that nostalgia versus all the people who have nostalgia for Mario. Whether you're still playing a Mario game to this day, you can still look back and have memories on playing your first Mario game and, and stuff like that. There are people like me who have no attachment to Sonic. And I think we're those people are much more like there are a lot more people like me than there are people who've never played a Mario game. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So, yeah. But I, I still think that the, the Sonic brand will continue. I, one thing I do think that Sega does really well, and we're seeing that right now, is they ex- they expand the Sonic brand outside of just games. We got yes. the, the movie, which it did really well. We're getting a sequel. They've yeah. always had, like, consistent uh, animation projects going on yeah. and stuff like that. So I think Sonic's gonna be fine i just don't think it's gonna be selling gangbusters like mario does yeah that's true. Yeah. Yeah. and i think that's now we see sonic kind of moving from obviously he's still in gaming but he's more of a figure a pop culture figure than he sure. is a gaming a relevant gaming figure yeah. um i think you know if they want to have him more relevant within gaming then you look to a partnership like getting sonic a sonic skin in fortnite honestly i think oh boy. We're, those kids that are watching the movie you get Sonic sure. in the games that those kids are playing. How do we push Sonic to the next level? You give him a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give him you, a gun. Give him a gun. And, give me a baby and, Sonic back bling. All right. And thanks, you put Sonic in Fortnite and there you go. <laughs> yeah. And thankfully, as long as the Olympics are around, Sonic and Mario go to the Olympics will always yeah. be around too. So yeah. that is true. Yeah. And that's how the Olympics is bringing all of us together. If it could that's bring right. Sonic mm. and Mario together, it could bring the world uh (laughs) great chat everybody i like how we're also solving the world's problems through acknowledging the olympics and how that could do that too um random way our conversations go as always but i do love them that is it for you uh for us here thank you guys at home for watching but before we go well what are you guys up to steve yeah, so I mean, we're we're in the throes of E3, so revving up for yeah. that, uh, finalizing all my plans for that. You, um, as we, as we start getting into E3, yeah, um, coverage is gonna go live on Squad State, so be sure to check out that and uh, follow me on Twitter at Svigvari for 
for more for more updates and just keep up with my day-to-day -day shenanigans all the shenanigans how about you malik um yeah i mean just like steve said e3 content i've decided that every opinion he posts i'm gonna do an article with the complete opposite <laughs> just so i can farm his views you know <laughs> no, <I'm not> kidding. <laughs> um but you know valorant was this the valorant masters competition was this past weekend so i'm gonna be going live uh talking about that twitch.tv slash live w malik uh but then i also had an article about no man's sky expeditions uh and why it's a game that you should play um go check it out expeditions are like these short accelerated two-week story missions uh cool. that they do that's almost like a season pass it's really cool uh, and then other than that i was downloading dying light platinum edition while we were doing this podcast and i'm going to try to write some articles about that because awesome. um i, I want to see everything that they've added back in mm. Nice, nice. And Caboose, are you going to be covering uh, Sonic Fighters in Yakuza? That is uh, unfortunately not happening, oh. although I know a lot of people are going to be really disappointed about that. Um, right. But no, I'm still uh, still doing my thing, playing a little more of Injustice, obviously hoping that we get an Injustice 3 sometime soon. But um, sticking with that, E3 is right around the corner, like Steve was saying, gearing up for that, hoping for some announcements regarding some Marvel games, maybe some DC games. You know, if we can get an update on Gotham Knights or Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, that'd be great. But in general, I'm just I'm excited. It's E3 time. And although we're not there in L.A. as much as I wish we could be, it's still fun that we're in that that mode, expecting game announcements, seeing gameplay reveals, all that stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. So just you can keep an eye out on that stuff on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Caboose. And then you can keep up to date on all my shenanigans, Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. I share that excitement with you uh, for everything E3. I think we all do. I'm super excited to see what's coming up. Um, so all my thoughts on everything, you can just follow at This Is Camco, as well as all the events that I'm doing around that. Uh, you could follow it there <laughs> as well. But for now, why don't you just follow Squad at Squad Stay on Twitter, and then you could read all the cool articles that Malik is going to make to counter Steve's... <laughs> articles at squadstate.com so tune in there for all that of course we'll be back next week to talk more gaming goodness but for now we hope you have a wonderful week enjoy your week guys